What's going on, Jerome's? Your Minnesota Fine Vikings head to Western New York on Sunday to take on the Buffalo Bills. And whoever's that quarterback, whether it's Josh Allen, whether it's Case Keenum, doesn't matter. It's going to be a tough-ass game. That defense is legit. Uh, they got talent all over the place, and they're extremely well coached uh, with Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier. So... It's going to be tough. It is going to be tough. But the Vikings have an opportunity to get a signature win, a resume patter, if you will. And the Vikings have a chance woo, to move to 8-1 and one on the season. Here are 10, 10 uh, keys for a Vikings victory on Sunday. Key number one, run the ball. Now, I, I understand with Kevin O'Connell coming in, you got Jefferson, you got Cousins, like open things up and chuck the ball over the place. I think this has to be a big-time Dalvin Cook game because the Bills, yes, are six in the NFL against the run, but the last two games, <laughs> so they gave up 208 on the ground against the Packers week eight. They gave up a buck 74 in a loss to the Jets uh, last Sunday, and Tremaine Edmonds, he is dinged up. If he plays, he won't be 100%. Absolute stud middle linebacker for them. Matt Milano's coming back from injury, but he won't be 100% either. Dalvin, I think he has a huge opportunity here where, hey, maybe they miss Harrison Phillips. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But Dalvin, uh, this could be like a, a 140 and 1, 140 and 2 type game. Uh, I think they do have to ride number four. And, and by the way, Dalvin playing his brother James, same field, NFL game. Love it. Absolutely huge uh, for the Cook family. But I, I think Dalvin, 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Uh, needs to be humming and the offensive line needs to be nasty out there next up uh, key number two for a Vikings victory start fast take a hit out on the mafia now this is going to be this is going to be interesting where I, in the NFL nowadays if the Bills win the coin toss they're generally going to defer because you want the ball in the second half you have a chance to have a, a nice little sandwich uh, you get the ball at the end of the first half you score and then you get the ball the second half uh, and you score same thing with the Vikings if they win the toss they generally do that but if the Vikings win the toss they should consider taking the ball first. So going out there and just putting together a long 75-yard, slow-burning touchdown drive, just imposing your will. A lot of Dalvin, a little bit of play action, a little Jefferson and Hawkinson in there as well, uh, just in an attempt to take out the crowd. Where, I mean, Buffalo respect. Bills Mafia is one of the loudest and proudest and most loyal fan bases in the NFL. And plus, you know that they're champing at the bit after that bitter loss against the Jets on Sunday. So... Uh, if you win the toss, take the ball. If you lose the toss, they're probably going to defer and you'll have the ball anyway. So go down, take the ball, and march and get a big-time score. Next up, key number three for a Vikings victory on Sunday. No mid-game lull. And we've seen this for the Vikings, where scripted plays go off like gangbusters. Kevin O'Connell march down and scores like, who the man? We the man. Who the man? We the man. And just that mid-game, beep, where the defense is giving up points, the offense is just comatose, morose. You can't do that, man. You can't do that. We need better adjustments with coaching. We need the players to step up more, and you cannot do this against the Bills. You just can't. Whether Josh Allen is there or not, he is not the whole team. Uh, Case Keenum with his uh, chemistry with Stephon Diggs. They have weapons all over the place on offense. That defense is still legit. I mean, Leslie Frazier's defense, first in the NFL in scoring, fourth in points, and third in turnovers. That's pretty, pretty, pretty damn good. And last time I checked, Josh Allen doesn't play on defense. So they got they got to get after and stay after. They got to keep winning the field position battle. They can't be having all these three and outs. They can't be giving up, uh, giving away, giving away, giving away and out in the red zone uh, consistently. Can't do that, man. Can't win with them. Can't do it. Next up, key number four for the Vikings getting a win on Sunday. Digs, 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 digs. That's it. That's the whole point, man, because we know Stefan Diggs, and, and you know, Stefan, even though he's saying all, all, all the right things, you know that he wants a little bit of, of revenge on his former team, even though uh, the people he had beef with, not with the Vikings anymore, d doesn't matter. He wants to show up and show out uh, against his former team and to show uh, the Vikings fans that, hey, even though you got Jefferson, I still got it too. I'm still pretty good. He's got, he's got 60 catches, 857, and seven touchdowns on the season. Uh, obviously, Josh Allen's favorite target if he plays. Uh, but, of course, we know th this isn't the normal backup quarterback situation. You got Case Keenum. I mean, the, the NFL script writers are on one. Uh, th this was like, you, you cannot script this any better. Of course, Diggs and Keenum go way back like chiropractic. So it's got to be anyone else except for 14. It can be Gabe Davis, don't care. It can be Isaiah McKenzie, don't care. Uh, but it's going to be a big time game for Patrick Peterson, as well as a Caleb Evans, who's in line to make his first career NFL start. Got a lot of faith in the pride of Mizzou. Uh, so whatever it takes, uh, w whether you shadow him, whether uh, both corners on the outside are taking care of things when Diggs drops into the slot, as well as uh, Harry. Harrison Smith, as well as Cam Beasy. I mean, it's going to take everyone. It's going to take all the King's horses and all the King's men uh, to shut down Stephon Diggs on Sunday. Next up, uh, key number five for the Vikings to get a win. 
the interior offensive line needs to not be garbage. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Garrett Bradbury dinged up with that ankle injury. If he goes, maybe won't be a hundred percent. We'll see. Uh, but last week, Let's be honest. Ezra Cleveland has the worst game as a pro, and Ed Ingram has given up a sack in every single game uh, in the last four or five weeks. So it hasn't been good. It has not been great. So uh, they got to step things up, even though the Bills, maybe they don't have a defensive tier on the caliber of Washington. They're still pretty damn studly inside. Ed Oliver, uh, the pride of Houston, is back off an injury. Jordan Phillips can get it. Uh, The veteran Daquan Jones has 15 pressures this season. uh, And the Bills' defensive interior is no slouch. And even though, of course, they got Von Miller on the outside, uh, they understand. It's like, hey, they watch all this tape. They've watched the games. They watched the Vikings game against the Commies. They they understand that you can make hay on the interior. So I think that the Bills and Leslie, I mean, uh, Leslie's not a huge blitzer, but you could see uh, a couple blitzes. You could see some some simple things like twists and stunts up front, which have uh, beaten the Vikings uh, pretty consistently uh, so far this season. So... It's going to be a tough one. It is going to be a tough one. And if Bradbury's good to go, Schlotman's in there, it doesn't matter. Got to step up on the inside. Next up, key number six for the Vikings to get a win on Sunday. Whoever the quarterback is, we after that ass. Yeah, that's right. Daniil Zadarius combined 11 and a half sacks a season. They're number one in the NFL with combined pressures. They got to stay hot. And I think that moving Zadarius around is really key. Also getting Wanham and Patrick Jones second involved, having fresh bodies because uh, it's going to be a long day. Uh, it is. And even though Deion Dawkins, uh, the left tackle, is an absolute stud, the pride of Temple, the rest of the offensive line can get got. You got veterans like Mitch Morse, uh, who's not having a good year, also is dinged up. Uh, plus, you got Roger Saffold, who's not the Roger Saffold, the old. Spencer Brown, the rookie. Uh, well, not rookie, but, you know, I mean, pride Northern Iowa is dinged up. But you certainly can get after Josh Allen if he plays. Uh, you can certainly get after Case Keenum. Even though Josh Allen has that crazy mobility and his elbow does, is not going to affect his legs, I still think that you can get after him. You know, same thing if Case Keenum does play. Even though Keenum has a little bit of mobility, as we've seen, Buffalo right seven heaven, uh, uh, putting the quarterback on the turf, getting back an extra possession, maybe forcing an errant throw, maybe picking off a meatball, maybe Harrison Smith has yet another interception uh, in a consecutive week. Would love to see that, man. Next up, number uh, key number seven. Really good accounting today. Von Miller. That's it. That's the whole key. So Von Miller, the ageless wonder, the pride of Texas A&M, he can still get after it, man. Uh, 29 pressures this year, seven sacks, rushes from both sides. Uh, is about half and half in terms of which side he rushes from, and that makes him dangerous, man. So it's going to have to be a big-time Christian Derrissaw game, which Derrissaw is playing at all-pro level. Brian O'Neill has had some ups and downs this year, except he's still Brian frickin' O'Neill. They need to bring their lunch pail. It's going to be a long-ass day. Also, Hawkinson, Munt, have to get some chips on Von Miller. Uh, plus the running backs, they got to get got to get it going, whether it's Dalvin, whether it's Madison, whoever, C.J. Hamm in there as well. they, they got to be able to communicate with the offensive line and know where number 40 is at all time. Because Von Miller, I mean, if Von Miller goes off, that could be it for the game. That, that's how uh, big of a player that he is. Key number eight for the Vikings to get a win on Sunday. Drop it like it's Hawk. Now, hmm, for, for the sake of puns, and cultural references, did we just uh, do, do we just curse T.J. Hawkinson, even though he's one of the most sure-handed tight ends in the game? W- whatever. But T.J. Hawkinson, last week, uh, just in the building for four days, nine catches for 70 yards on nine targets, played 60 of 66 offensive snaps, was absolutely getting after, man. And Buffalo, it, so it is kind of tough. Buffalo is, is, has given up the eighth fewest fantasy points to a tight end uh, in the NFL, but uh, they do get Matt Milano back from an oblique injury. Uh, great coverage linebacker, although he won't be 100%, plus uh, safety Jordan Poyer's availability being dicey. That's going to be key for the Vikings. And, hell, even if they both play, uh, I think that certainly TJ Hawkinson is going to be a threat because, you know, Leslie obviously saw it last week. He's like, oh, all of a sudden, they got a tight end. All of a sudden, they have a tight end who's over six foot two, and not also not named Johnny Munt. So Hawkinson uh, is going to be that X factor. I think that he could potentially take a lot of attention away from Jefferson, away from Thielen, away from KJ. Uh, so that's going to be really interesting. That that middle of the field, where hey, if they want to double and triple Justin Jefferson on the outside, and TJ's got single coverage over the middle, Kirk's got to recognize that and building that chemistry up with eighty seven, and, and then we'll be good to go. And if they start uh, giving more attention to Hawkinson, that open thing, things up on the outside, that open things up in the run game, it's going to be big. Uh, next up, number nine for the Vikings, Jefferson. Moving on up to the east side, we finally got a piece of the pie. So Leslie is number one priority. 
is going to be Justin Jefferson. Like, yes, Delvin, yes, Hawkinson, yes, whatever. Number 18 is going to be public enemy number one for Buffalo. Uh, 59 catches, 867 yards, and three touchdowns a season. Now, we were we were thinking it was going to be an LSU versus LSU battle with Tredavious White uh, practicing, uh, and they're looking to get him off the pup list, but hasn't been activated. doesn't look like he's probably going to be available on Sunday. Uh, but Dane Jackson, respect the pride of Pitt, Kyra Olam, are also – no slouches. They're tough-ass cornerbacks on the outside. Uh, but Jefferson needs to ascend above all that. And this has this is an opportunity where you have two of the top teams in the NFL and you're in their building. I think Jefferson has a chance to just really show, like, hey, I am wide receiver one. Also, I mean, in even though they're never going to be on the field at the same time, Diggs and Jefferson, they're always going to be tied together because of the trade. So it, it could be almost like a game of Horace. Like Diggs has a big-time catch. Jefferson has a big-time catch. Jefferson has a touchdown. Diggs tries Tries to get a touchdown, uh, all that stuff. So uh, I think Jefferson really does step up in big time spots, and it, this one's got to be one as well. Lastly, uh, key number ten for the Vikings. Speaking of stepping up, this has to be Kirk Cousins' finest hour. So Kirk is going viral with the chains and, and all that stuff, and it's fun. Uh, but the Vikings, they don't have that signature win yet. Yeah, I mean, six wins in a row is fantastic. All these come from behind wins. All the drama, all this, that, and the other thing, but. A big time win over a top tier opponent in Buffalo, six foot, uh, six foot two, six and two on the season, uh, and then getting it done in their building with with that crowd. I think that's going to silence the the few remaining Kirk Cousins haters. And I think if Kirk comes out and has a big time game, also on the road, so that plane ride home. I and mean, what's going to happen? Like Kirk's going to be dressed up like Borat uh, or, or Mr. T on the way home. So that, that's what it's going to be. But uh, I think this is a big time opportunity for Kevin O'Connell, for Kirk Cousins to just be like, shh, seven to one. People still calling us a fluke. Shoot, shoot, get out of here. Final score prediction. Weather's going to be decent uh, in Buffalo. It's going to be clear, slight, a slight 16 mile an hour wind. It's going to be about 40 degrees. It's pretty nice uh, for this time of the year in November uh, in Western New York. But whew, this is going to be a tough ass game. I, I think this is going to come down to a slugfest. The Vikings defense is playing great. Uh, obviously, Leslie Frazier's uh, defense is uh, phenomenal as well. I think that this is going to be. They're going to have to rely on. Dalvin quite a bit. I think that play action gets going. I think Hawk and Jefferson uh, do a little something in the passing game. I think Kirk Cousins plays within himself. I think that whether it's Josh Allen, whether it's Case Keenum, whoever, I think the Vikings get after that ass. I think they cause a turnover or two. So, as weird as it sounds, I'm calling it. I, I'm calling it. So I, I'm putting the, the Vikings 17, Bill 16. So sort of a low score and ugly affair, but the Vikings come out on top and whoo, like. For Vikings fans, if they want to, so if the Vikings want to sell off a couple of seats on that team plane after a victory, and sell it off for charity, people would pay big time money, big time money, absolutely insane, man. But the Vikings get it done on the road, a big time statement win, and move to eight and one on the season. They put Philly on notice, put the national media jabroni haircuts on notice, like, hey, this team is legit. They are for real, and baby. Baby, we got a stew going. But uh, that's it. Vikings Bills preview. Uh, what are your keys uh, for victory? Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.